Hey folks, Just Me Sabari here. Since we're in the middle of spring, I decided to do a peanut special review simply called It's Spring Training Charlie Brown. With Charlie Brown and the rest of his gang are practicing and training during the spring just to get ready for the big baseball game. Now this is going to sound pretty interesting because this is the 35th peanut special that never aired prime time on CBS. It was originally going to be scheduled to be released as it was produced sometime on May 28, 1992, but the network had shelved it for obvious reasons. I mean, I don't even know why, per se, but it was remained unseen until Paramount had got the rights, since they had released all the Penis specials. They also had the rights to the uh, the last two films that they put out. That they wanted to um, be able to air it as a double feature with um, another Peanuts special. So, it was released on January 19, 1996. Simply straight to video. But it did air it on TV on Nickelodeon on February 23, 1998 as part of the You're on Nickelodeon Charlie Brown block. Which, believe it or not, was the first time I ever saw that special and I didn't realize. So I knew I missed uh, out on a lot of things. Of course, the special was also on Lucy Must Be Traded Charlie Brown DVD as well as uh, uh, Go Snoopy Go, the, the Peanuts uh, Collection Buying Free DVD set. But I do have um, the DVD of uh, Lucy Must Be Traded. But hey, this is really something. Now before I get to the review here, I previously reviewed the Charlie Brown and Snoopy show. Because I know they have a lot of their baseball uh, episodes here. Um, I guess another thing I forgot to mention, so I'm going a bit uh, off topic here was that uh, I forgot to mention that Pepper and Patty episode where she was chewing on the, the pencil you know, it causes uh, Marcy to feel very nervous and then she was taking a chew and false test until she realized that she just couldn't take it anymore she doesn't want to deal with school anymore because of of um, her teacher her principal and everything so she decided to stay over at Charlie Brown's house and winds up on top of Snoopy's doghouse, you know, which she actually refers to as the guest cottage. Which, that's when they started to miss school one day, but Marcy was trying her best to, to get her back to school. And decided, so her plan was to drag her down, and that's when Snoopy's doghouse uh, fell apart. So she's trying to explain to her that the little kid with the big nose is actually a dog who's a beagle. And that's when Pepper and Patty keeps saying, a beagle? <laughs> Several times. And then late, yeah, because it seemed like he even explains that, she even explains that uh, she has psychological problems. By, by then, though, Snoopy did, did become a helicopter with and Woodstock becoming the pilot and then picks her up and decided to take her to school. <laughs> okay. And yeah, there are a few more I forgot to mention, but that's okay. It's just the video was so long that it will probably take, you know, hours and hours. Not to mention my camera battery died, too. So, you know, when my. Since it only records for 30 minutes. That's why it cuts down, and then sometimes I make all these mistakes. You know how it is. That's what, ha what happens when I have to get a digital camera that can go up to 30 minutes. Okay, well, with that aside, <laughs> let's review this special. It stars Justin Shangaro. If you're familiar with that name, he went on to do uh, the voice of Harold in the TV show Hey Arnold. I already believe that was him. And yeah, he was also uh, did the voice acting of that of uh, Louis uh, Bully in the TV show Life with Louis. Yeah, Louis Anderson's uh, TV show. 
among others. And and he's as Charlie Brown, John Christian Grass as Linus Van Pelt, Marinette Patterson as Lucy Van Pelt, Gregory Grunt as Leland, yeah, Leland, who was part of the uh, the Goose Eggs, um, which is a, a team of small misfits, as as shown on the the comic strips from Peanuts, which was actually featured in It's Adventure of Charlie Brown and a Charlie Brown Celebration. With that in mind, uh, Travis Bowles as Schroeder, Jessica Nawafor as uh, Franklin. Elizabeth Moss as Patty or Marcy or whatever. I don't. I guess they just keep changing. Yeah, there, there was a an animation error for some reason. Like at times you thought it was Marcy, and other times you thought it was Patty, because the glasses were moved. So, but I guess they got screwed up somehow. Um, and of course, Marcy's part of silent. Uh, Michael J. Sandler as the boy player on the opposite team. Uh, Noli Fortin as Frida, and Bill Melendez as Snoopy. Yeah, Woodstock isn't included. There is Shermie and Pigpen, along with Marcy or Patty, whatever, and Five, but they all appear silent. It's created and written by Charles M. Schultz, and it's directed by Sam Gimes. The special begins uh, during the winter, still snow on the ground, yeah, and, and Snoopy is laying on, on the back of his doghouse, covered with snow. Charlie Brown was shoving his way to the pitcher's mound, wondering where everyone is on his team, and decided to practice for spring training, because, yeah, he's, he bought in his baseball bat, his baseball cap, and just getting ready for the pitch, but then everyone's, like, throwing snowballs at him. But after that, it did become spring, and Charlie Brown is having spring training with his baseball team. Yep, which includes Linus and Lucy, Schroeder, and, and all the rest. So the team is practicing all right, but as usual, their team always stink. But then we meet a, a little boy named Leland who happens to be Frida's little brother, just putting on a, some baseball clothing, you know, such as his, uh, his big uh, violet uh, helmet and all of his gear. And he tells uh, Frida that he's going to try out for Charlie Brown's baseball team. Um, Leland goes to Charlie Brown and asks if he could join his team, but Charlie Brown has to test him see if he's good enough for it, so meaning that he has to follow all the commands that he does. And yeah, so he has to practice. And he got it there. <laughs> and he finally joins. So during practice, Charlie Brown is being annoyed how lousy his team is, mostly because of Lucy, you know, because of the way she she forgets to, you know, catch the ball. See? And and they always keep blaming Charlie Brown for not catching the ball and all that whatever. But then they also begin to wonder that they had no uniforms. So Charlie Brown figures that since Lucy was right, she, he decided to talk to uh, Linus uh, later that day, discuss that they should get some uniforms. But the only problem is he talks to uh, Mr. Hendersey, who owns a hardware store, saying that if only they win the game, he'll be responsible to bring in some new uniforms uh, for the team. So, so yes, he asked if he would sponsor for them. So that's the truth. I mean, they had to win their first game of the season in order to have them. So the next day, Charlie Brown tells the team the news that they're happy that they're going to be sponsored and hoping that they will get their uniforms and praying to God that they will win the first game of the season, as promised. But then, of course, they're afraid that they will never win a game, because they never won a game in their life. Well, I, I know, I know. 
they have won a game on the Charlie Brown Snoopy Show, which it was Rerun who forfeited the game by gambling, betting that who would win or who would lose. As I explained on my review, or but hey, um, they did what they could. So once they um, getting ready for it, I mean, with the new team joining in against them, that's um, that's when they decided to have a uh, sort of their anthem, and I'm going to explain that uh, after the the review. Um, which Franklin became the lead here, <laughs> to sing like a uh, a victory song, hoping that this will they will pray that this is going to be the big game. Well, when the game begins, uh, things don't look too good as it seems for the first time around. When when the first person hits a home run on the first pitch, but Charlie Brown never gave up. So when he did the next pitch, Snoopy catches and the team suddenly approves and they're getting better and better but they're still a bit worried and shaken up because once Leland was up at bat I mean this is where it gets really difficult he only made it up to ball one so he missed the ball then he gave two strikes and then all of a sudden the last pitch actually hits his helmet he was all shooken up, and then he starts to, uh, you know, go to uh, the first, the second, and the third base, just as you know the the players are about to catch the ball, and then they miss. And once he slides into uh, the right straight into home, they won. Yep, they actually won, 27 to 26. <laughs> for the first time ever. So now they finally got their uniforms from Mr. Hendersey. And it was pretty funny too because Snoopy was <laughs> trying it on, but he forgot to take the pin out. <laughs> but now they're getting ready for their second baseball game, but sad to say though, Leland decided to quit because his uniform didn't fit. It was too big, yes, because he was the smallest of the group. I mean, he's a, he's a very little kid, so I can see how tough it would be. So, in the end, he left, but Charlie Brown had congratulated him for winning the first game of the season and did the best that they could. So... Hoping that now that they have new uniforms, I think they're going to get better and better as they turn out. But it just gets worse. I guess Leland should have continued to join him to help it. But Well, they hoped they would win, but they lost. By the time it was finally over, Charlie Brown, with Linus, going up to the wall, says in his mind, It's not how you look. It's how you play the game. So he must have thought of that up. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's perfect though, I guess. But, I gotta say, um, this is a pretty underrated uh, peanut special that's, um, of course, a baseball episode, and I do like it. Um, I'll say this, it's better than it's Arbor Day Charlie Brown, you know, where Charlie Brown has a team up with Pepper and Patty's team, and yes, even though it, all the plants and trees were planted, which definitely ruins it completely. Yeah, that's why it was one of the weakest of them all. But in a way, I the animation looks very good too, and so it still remains as what the comic strip looks like. Um, this was also uh, the last special to feature composer uh, Judy Munson, who provided some some synthesizers, you know, giving a bit of a hip uh, '90s feel to it. Because even though this was produced in 1992, they were going for that hip hop style. 
uh, which that's what we're going to lead to was when when they were doing a uh, a victory dance before the game starts this is where they decided to do the hokey pokey instead of their national anthem which they should have done kind of like when they did the national anthem in a boy named Charlie Brown <laughs> yeah when they were preparing for the baseball game which sadly they lost but um, they actually went for this hip style when you got Franklin as the lead actually doing the a rap song called that's what it's all about and I, I love that too I mean yeah okay it sounds cheesy and, and unnecessary but it's pretty cute I mean hey it's better than Vanilla Ice is rapping if you think about it <laughs> well I guess I could deal with uh, the ninja rap for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, 2, The Seed of the Ooze. <laughs> I, I'm not the biggest Vanilla Ice fan. The less we can say, the better. I mean, I love the way Snoopy started dancing you know, with, with the baseball bat and doing all these moves. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you see the, the rest of the penis game doing all these moves too, and then Franklin just rapping. I thought that was really cool, at least. I mean, of course, it's the 90s, so I guess we had to go there, even though it's, it was supposed to remain timeless. <laughs> um, so there, there was a lot of beats um, through uh, Judy Munson, and try to be as hip and, and cool here. But hey, this isn't the only special that went for that. I mean, I know uh, it was... Um, it was the best birthday ever Charlie Brown actually had some hip tunes too going for that 90s style so that was an interesting thing they did also um, here's another thing too I, I like to say was that um, with the animation that they use in the special they would also later use it um, once again the, it was my best birthday ever to him. And yes, um, I know there was an animation error, was, as I mentioned already earlier, that there are times when we thought that it's either Marcy or Patty, because they keep changing the, her character um, very strangely. I mean, at times you see Marcy wearing glasses, and then other times you just see her without glasses. and. Or maybe it might have been, well, Patty, but isn't Patty supposed to look different? That's what I don't understand. So that's kind of weird. And, yeah, I guess we could also note that uh, this was a second special besides Charlie Brown All-Stars where, yes, Mr. Hennessy had agreed to, you know, to sponsor new uniforms in order for them to win the game. So I guess you could say this was sort of like almost a remake of Charlie Brown's All-Stars, but even that's kind of clear here. Um, so I guess at times, you know, it, even with the, the 90s uh, vibe that they went into it, it could be a little dated even by 1996 <laughs> when they aired it, um, when it was released on direct video. So. Um, Hey, but, um, anyway, I thought Leland was um, a great addition to, uh, for this Peanuts special because considering that he's part of the golden, part of the goose eggs, I mean, this really worked. And we only had to get to see, like, just um, a few seconds of Frida. So, so Frida was there, but she's, she was only there just sitting on her... Uh, her pouch just watching TV just like how you know Charlie Brown Linus and Lucy or even Sally or anybody else just sit down to watch it so <laughs> there you go um, I mean it was really tough because you know considering how small he really is you know he's he was even having trouble trying to catch the ball or but it, it gets better you know the ball suddenly went straight into his helmet <laughs> it's a huge helmet or, 
already. I mean, they were trying to get better and better as they turn out. But, either way, I like the special. Um, it, it was worth it. And definitely perfect for for the spring season. So anyway, that's it's spring training, Charlie Brown. And I give it four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.